Hello, it's Tuesday 12.30 and what an amazing and beautiful day it is. Whatever the weather is like and wherever you are in the world, I hope that you too are having a fabulous day. And welcome to the Mindset Michelle TV show, where today I have an extra special guest, one of my longest and dearest friends and associates. For many, many years now, I've watched this young man grow and develop into such a superstar and he's my extra special guest today. Welcome, Brad. Thanks, Michelle. Awesome to be here with you. And uh, yeah, great work on this podcast. It's amazing. Thanks, Brad. And what for those of you that don't know who Brad is, Brad Eisenhower is the CEO and founder of The Outperformer. Now, it's one of Australia's fastest growing consultancy firms. And Brad himself has such an incredible and interesting background that I'm sure we're all really looking forward to hearing about how you can change through many different careers, but by building a successful mindset, whatever it is that you turn your hand to, you're actually going to build success in that as well. But Brad, to start with, do you want to share a little bit about yourself and your background? Yeah, thanks, Michelle. I'm, uh, I'm not sure how, how interesting this aspect of my uh, of this conversation will be because I always, I suppose, some, we all underestimate the uh, the value of our, our past sometimes. But you know, I'm I'm a pretty simple person. I've uh, I've got a, a family of two beautiful kids and a wife, and we uh, we have lots of fun and we we look at each day as it comes and enjoy what's in front of us. We don't exactly have the most extravagant lifestyle, but we are um, really really passionate about the things we do. And I guess. You know, before I talk about the business and, and what, what what might be a lot of today's conversation around mindset and how that's all come about, um, I think to to help, you know, if we talk about mindset and we think about where my mindset's been developed, it's probably come from, you know, a, a great upbringing from my parents and uh, as a young guy, a young boy, um, always, I don't know why, but I had a, had a lot of... Um, interest and in, in intrigue around people who did amazing things. I think my mum and dad always showed um, interest in uh, whether it's athletes or whether it's uh, professionals or people in their own lives that were doing amazing things that were trying to challenge the status quo, be better than what they could be before. And, and I think that rubbed off on me and, and what, you know, how that showed up in my life was that I found that I, I just, every time I looked at something, I thought, well, how can I, do the best I can in this and, and get worked out just some ways that I think still today um, help me get ahead, um, help me get things done more efficiently, help me get, get to where I want to be. And it's, it's really helped. Um, it's really been valuable in my life. And I suppose like if I give you an example of that, you know, I, I as a child or as a young boy, I, I, was, a, I was a pretty small uh, I still am a small person. I'm, I'm fairly short. If you, uh, Michelle, you know me. I'm not exactly the the biggest bloke around town. But you know, I was really passionate when I was a kid about playing rugby league. Um, lots of boys have that dream of you know playing in the NRL or you know being a, a football superstar. And unfortunately, I never got to that level. But I, I certainly, uh, I ended up playing reserve grade, um, getting a contract when I was about 16 years old to um, to play professional football and. Did quite well in that space, being this sort of you know guy that when he was a kid was playing in the B grade in in the under eights, right? And I think what I learned through that was it didn't really matter what sort of obstacles, what sort of perspective people have about who you are. Um, if you're smart about the way you you set yourself up, you can get to where you want to get to. You just have to do the things that it takes to get you where you want to get to. Um, so whether it was that or whether it was through education or whether it's through different parts of my career, I've always taken that, that, that view is, is do the thing that needs to be done uh, and often might be very different to what other people are doing and, and often it needs to be very particular to who you are to, um, to get where you are. So these days that plays out a lot with, with our business. We're five years into uh, the game. Um, the, the practice is growing Pretty rapidly. Sometimes I have to um, scratch myself and remind myself that um, you know the, the cool things we're doing are, are actually happening. Um, and uh, and you know that came out of me being uh, having a career never never as a consultant. Uh, I'd never worked in a, a you know a consulting business or consulting firm. Uh, I'd worked in different fields across my career and have taken a lot of knowledge and sort of combined it and brought great experts and people around me to to build what we've got today. So, you know, we're really lucky to work with some amazing organisations and amazing leaders that 
bring us in to ultimately drive change journeys and cultural shifts and um, you know execution of technology that supports or underpins the desired changes that, that this organization these organizations are going through and so we're really lucky that we not only do we do we get to work with them but we, we get this sort of holistic support to the executive group or the the particular leader of the team that we work with and just tailor and design the way we work with them to to suit where they need to go so you know that's been fun um sure we can talk more about it but hopefully that gives people a bit of context into who i am and maybe why why i'm doing what i'm doing today and I really thank you for that fabulous explanation um, all the way from rugby through to working with some of um, the largest organisations in Australia. Not many people can tell that story arch um, so quickly and so wonderfully. So thank you for that, Brad. I, I'm interested as well because I, I really picked up on your parents giving you that understanding about looking at role models and so I'm interested, when, when you were being given those opportunities, um, when you reached those heights at 16 in rugby, did you actually see then, did you start to see other men in that rugby space that actually were like yourself, you know, maybe a bit smaller than the other bigger blokes, but they were able to then use whatever their particular skills were to create success for themselves? Was that one of the times... That you start, you could see that you started to build that pattern, if you like. To some degree, yes, uh, and to some degree, no. And and I'll I'll explain it. I think uh, everyone's got their own strengths and weaknesses, and and regardless of stature or or whatever it might be, you, you know, I think it's really powerful to nuance in on what your sort of superpowers are relative to others. And then overlay that on the kind of context and the the, the way you you look at the, the thing you're doing. So if I think about league for me, rugby league, you know, I probably um, had a great like a stronger work ethic than a lot of people. Um, so I knew that if I worked at things like getting stronger, you know, my technique, technique consistently, that um, that might pay off. Um, if I brought that to the, the, the field and, and some of the other things that I knew were probably a little bit more in my um, my wheelhouse was my kind of my tenacity and my, my, my guys aggressive mindset, I suppose. So while I was quite small, um, I, I realised that that was something that, you know, I would put myself into positions that other people wouldn't really be comfortable putting themselves into. And um, I just would get back up if I got hurt, I'd, you know, kind of play on and do my best to, to push through pain and, and suffering and things that happen on, on on the football field. So, you know, that that role modelling, probably aspects of it I took from different people and, and I would see the things that allow them to shine and, and say, well, okay, well, if that thing allows you to, to sort of be um, be successful, they'll take that, but I'll, I'll take this piece or take that motivation from someone else because, you know, I may not have all of their other, you know, attributes. And that's at an individual level. That was sort of one of the things that I, I looked at earlier on in my life. The other thing I sort of learned as well is that, you know, um, my mum was in, in nursing and, and often would, you know, look at a doctor as a, you know, kind of a pinnacle career and, and I studied hard. And there's times in my life where I think when you're a bit naive, a bit young, you, you'd say, okay, look, well, probably the best thing I can do is be a doctor because, you know, that's, that's what a respectful person will do who's, who's intelligent and can continue to study and, and do the best thing for the world and all these sorts of things. But, you know, I, I think what I, I learned pretty quickly through rugby league and through that experience of just kind of making things happen that I possibly thought were possible was that, you know, maybe I can come up with my own path. Um, and that was probably the first time where I started to challenge myself to say, well, look, you know, you, you don't have to just follow what mum and dad say. I mean, they're very good role models and, and gave me lots of, you know, um, uh, ways of belief systems that, that still to this day are very powerful for me. But um, I, I think uh, the idea of um, kind of making your own path was, you know, for me personally, really rewarding and, and, and driving and motivating, you know. So um, the idea of not being like everyone else, for some reason I was really attracted to that. Um, so... Yeah, maybe that's why I've had an unusual career and doing unusual things that I'm maybe not supposed to be doing. But yeah, it's uh, it's worked out pretty well for me. And I really like that. I, I thank you for exploring that a little bit more because I can really see how, um, as that young man and taking the best of the different people, what worked and what didn't work with you, 
and then also having that strong determination work ethic that you were describing. And then you, you also said it very truly around your parents as well. As much as they were great role models, it was taking aspects of them, but then essentially beating your own path or marching to your own sound of your own drum. So with that, what do you think success means to you then? Uh, it, it's, it's a funny one. Success, you know, I, I'm, I'm a believer that success, first of all, you, you, it's, 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 in, it's subjective, right? It's, everyone else has their, their view of what subjective is, as, what success looks like. And to me personally, I find success in doing things that, um, like you've probably seen this theme very, very quickly with me, uh, doing things that I um, or others um, feel or find very challenging. I, I find a lot of value in tackling concepts that are a bit um, big or hairy or scary for for whatever scenario it might look like. And um, so to me, it's it's that idea, like if I look at the work we do in our business, it's the idea of a team doing something they never thought they were capable of or a business changing and embracing something that makes them more effective and better and it hasn't been done before. Um, so that's like, you know, for success for me, like I get up in the morning, I get excited about that. It, it, it stimulates me, it keeps my mind engaged, it keeps me motivated, that idea of progressing towards um, something that's, you know, challenging. Or, and, and, you know, maybe that might change one day. Um, but for this stage of my life and for a long time, it's, it, I, I, it's been a theme for some reason I've been very attracted to and, and you know, I find a lot of success in that. The other, the other thing I, I find um, is, is uh, the idea that... Um, you know, I work with people that have a growth mindset and that to me is success as well. So it's like almost like that idea that it, it feels great to work with people that want to keep challenging things like I want to challenge them. Um, and, and it doesn't mean I'm trying to set up, you know, this almost like a, you know, like kind of this idea that everyone's going to believe me and do my thing, right? I, I'm comfortable with inclusiveness and diversity and I want to be challenged and I love being challenged, but I just love the idea that we are challenging. You know, it's that principle that we're always challenging, we're always looking at a better way of doing things. We're not sort of caught up in this egocentricity of um, needing to defend our point of view or defend our position or try and be right. Like I'd actually prefer to be wrong and know that we get to the right answer. And that, ex that, that excites me. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's success. I don't know. For me, that's, that's what it is. Uh, I'm sure if you, you know, the reality is if you speak to anyone else, um, and it should be that way, I think, you know, people should find well, success. And that's, in what so, that's what's so beautiful about each week asking these questions and getting the different lens or viewpoints on what success means to people. And, and I think um, especially, you know, being somebody that marches to their own beat and, and enjoys those challenges and enjoys the, the, the adventure, if you like, of mm -hmm. doing things that haven't been done before, um, you, you bring a very different lens again, which is perfect to, you know, that diversity around what does success mean? And, and the other question that we love to ask people is around, so what sort of tips would you share around mindset? What, what would you share with people watching around what you believe would be mindset tips to help them? Yeah. Um, well, I've got a few, but the, the first one for me that always keeps me very honest is not to worry about what other people think a success needs to be or what I should be. Um, you know, it's it's. I find it really dangerous to try and live to up to someone else's expectations um, of what my life should be. Um, and so, the first thing for me that really helps ground me is this idea of defining that myself, working out what it is. You know, for me, and, and it takes exploration and it changes and it evolves and all of that sort of stuff. But I think from a mindset point of view to not need to pretend that living someone else's life is, is going to make you happy. Um, and how do you think, because that's a very um, advanced kind of understanding of success as intrinsic, so it comes from inside rather than what your outside world kind of dictates. Yeah. How, how do you think other people watching can build more of that within themselves, given that for most people, outward success and what the world says about them tends to define how they feel. 
Yes, yeah, look, it's it's not easy, um, and and you know I work with teams and people and leaders on this stuff all the time, and it's it's um, it, it, look. I think at the end of the day, it comes back to what's important to you, right? You, you've you, you can't really impose thinking on someone else. You can only help them realize their own version of of the truth that they have. And I I look at um, you know challenge why i've come up with that sort of way or that reference point is because i've never f- found sustainable happiness or success in the like external uh, or extrinsic kind of um, components of my life so whether i buy a new car or buy a house like of course you know i actually just finished building a beautiful new home I, I, it makes you know it's happy it's rewarding it's nice it's cool but it, it's not going to change really who i am um it just provides me more space to do stuff um, or you know means I'm a little bit closer to the park or to my kids school or something so you know I, I don't um, I, I, the answer in that is you know in terms of helping people think about that is to consider what actually is sustainable and in terms of the things that allow you to stay on, on path towards where you want to go I, I, it's, I don't really know the answer for every person to be fair and I don't think it's right to say that you know what would what should you do to go and orientate yourself towards an intrinsic drive? But what I will say is if you start looking at all the things that are external to your life um, that don't provide uh, continuous to sustain gratification, um, then maybe that's it. Now, for me, externally, probably the things that do provide that to me are my children um, and, 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 um, and my wife and, and, and friends and family. But I think the interesting selfish component in that is that what I look for in that is that idea that I'm motivated by seeing them grow and I'm motivated by seeing them kind of evolve and, and my role in supporting that, right? So it's still an intrinsic thing, albeit it's motivated or stimulated by kind of who they are, right, in my life. So, and there's a bit of a narrative that, there's a bit of a narrative that goes with that too, which is, well, you know, my belief system is that they're important. So... Yeah, I, I don't know if that really answers your question about the, the whole intrinsic versus extrinsic piece, but that's just my take on it. Well, I think you've raised a couple of really good, simple takeaways for people. One about um, things are not necessarily what make people happy or, or give internal motivation. And secondly, um, that part of that intrinsic motivation does come from the relationships around you. So I just wanted to unpack it a little bit more so that, people could take away specific action points. So understanding that it's not a new car, a new house, but it can be more time with your family or being able to get to the kids' school and and things like that. And, look, I think one of the things to take into it is something I've I've learned over the years is this notion of human needs, right, these these things that we're... In, we're, we're just naturally kind of driven to, to look for in our lives. And there's, sort of, you know, we talk about it in our business around the red zone and the green zone. So the red zone being these things that we, we need as safety or security or control in our lives. So this idea of status, autonomy, et cetera, these, that, that's, the red, that's where the red zone is. And, and naturally we need to have that to feel safe. It's, we were designed as human beings to, to kind of look for that. Um, and, but then in the green zone, I guess this is where I orientate a lot of my attention because I try to keep my, my red zone nice and safe in my own personal sphere. And, and But at a, um, in the green zone, that's being a team player. That's that's playing to meaning and purpose. You know, this is the, the big stuff that matters, right? And, and I think that's where that, that motivation comes from is when you start dealing with that red zone you start dealing with the idea that you know status doesn't always need to be attended to um yes you know what my mindset around control is the world around me changes but yet i I can only do what i can control in that and i can wake up in the morning and feel safe that i'll get by and i'll do okay right um no matter what happens right so you start to kind of deal with those sorts of things those fear and anxiety driving kind of components of who you are you can play a much bigger game more consistently in my experience Well, and I think you also um, very lovely there started to share with people about where you place your focus. So, yes, you need to take care of those safety and security elements, but then you want to keep having your focus on what you were describing as your green elements Mm -hmm. so that you're not caught up all the time about safety and, and security kind of concerns. Yes, you do need to take care of them, but having that focus on where you're going and, and what your long-term goals are. So given the the outstanding success of the Outperformer and the fact that your organisation has been growing and award-winning so rapidly and so quickly, 
What else do, would you like to share with people about the mindset that helps you to keep growing and developing a business like that? Oh, it's probably a few other little tips that um, I could probably offer that help me personally. Uh, I'm not sure to say, it's just, you know, sure these always work for everyone, but for me, one thing is I always, um, if I put something down that I, you know, agree is important to me, I follow through and do it. Um, I know it sounds super simple, but, you know, if something's important enough to, to describe as important and say it's important, then kind of go and do it. Um, and it isn't easy and it isn't... Um, isn't always um, simple. You know, there's stuff, there's been long days and long kind of challenging moments and, and things that I've had to, you know, kind of change in order in, in, in kind of the way I approach things that um, to, to make things more effective, right? But that's just part of growing and normal and uh, it comes with the journey. So if you say you're going to do something, realise that you're going to probably change. You're probably going to go through some frustrations um, and just tackle that. Um, I think the second thing is, you know, for me, being grateful you know the there are times where things don't go to plan um there are times where you know you'll you'll hit some you know, challenges I, I, you know covid for us was an interesting challenge we we have a lot of face time with our clients in different ways and particularly at that time thankfully we had you know the capacity to move things online really rapidly and done a lot of that before but you know, it, it was just knowing that at the end of the day, we'll get through this and I'm grateful for what we do have. I'm grateful for the, the strengths and the things that will get us through, you know, kind of the next 50 years or next 10 years, 20 years, rather than the next two minutes. Um, I don't get caught up on that or try not to get caught up on that. Um, and then I guess the the final thing that I'd, I'd probably, um, you know, think that help from a mindset point of view is putting good people around you that have a good mindset, you know, um, sometimes you you will see people around you that just keep chipping at it or detract it and they may not be doing it intentionally it just might be not a particularly healthy type of mindset that they bring to you um and and for me it, you know i um i just think when that's around me it, it, it makes me less efficient with my thinking it um it just holds me back it slows me down a little bit because i I'm, i kind of feel like i have to deal with that, that you think it's around. a little bit like those rugby players you were talking about earlier that you, you can see in different people that the, the people that are supporting you and that you see have got you know whether it's a skill or a behavior or a pattern whatever it might be mm. but you, you can see that you've surrounded yourself now with the out in the outperformer and the people that you work with with um, different people bringing some of those core areas that then you can see holistically make a great team. Yeah, definitely. Look, I think I think you're so. I think diversity in terms of strengths and and, and capability is huge. I, I do think there are things about mindset that are very. If we can keep them consistent, they're very healthy, right? So a growth mindset. You know, if I think of describe as the simplicity of a growth mindset to me is that you you always recognise that you can um, take a concept further, that you might have vulnerabilities, you might have gaps, but you're, you're working on that, right? And you, that growth mindset to me, when that plays out, in, whether it's a team member or client or whoever I work with, it, it makes life so much easier to work with, right? It's just, you know, we all know that we're wrong. We all know we make mistakes. We all know we're going to stuff things up from time to time. Um, so that sort of core is really powerful to, to have around you, in my opinion. It just makes your life a lot easier. It makes makes getting on with the job a lot easier. When you think about, and obviously not everyone's going to have that, so you you need to be able to deal with it. You, real, you need to be able to help people when they do get a little bit fixed or they do get stuck in their ways or they get caught up in their own story. Um, but if they get caught up on that too long, you've got to make the hard call, you know, particularly when you're in a small business. It's not always healthy to have that, rigidity and, and and that that kind of um need to be right when you're trying to progress and tackle things that have never been done before it doesn't help you um but and the I, idea from, I, I was just going to say and i know from um, your early days with the art performer and and the work that you were doing that you did go through some quite difficult times and challenging um evolutions of the art performer and and what you were doing and who you were working with and who was part of that inner circle for you yeah definitely and, and look i've been through that in different iterations but i'm and i'm grateful for those people like i think there's they have a role to play at that point in time and unfortunately you know sometimes they can, they won't go on the journey with you the entire time and that's um that's not because 
Um, I don't like them as a person. That's just because it's just not right for where, where we're going. Um, and, um, yeah, look, it, to be honest, it can be challenging. It can be really hard when, when someone's pushing against the grain or, or not working in the same direction as where you or the broader group feels like you're going or wanting to go. So, you know, that's, that's, that's hard, but that's kind of part of business. Um, but as I say, you know, if you're thinking about mindset, it, it does help to, to attract and work with people that have that core common set of values that are, are pretty aligned and, and, and help you get through those challenging times. And that's not about strengths in terms of capability, right? Because, you know, um, you can have very, you can have someone who's an amazing, um, I've got people that work with us in data and technology. I've got people that work with us in culture. Uh, I've got people who work with us in sort of leadership or coaching. You know, they can have very consistent values and very consistent belief systems that are come with, that are applied to the way they work with each other, the way that we work as a team, but they just have completely different roles in projects and completely different roles in terms of what they bring to the table. So, you know, that's that's really important to be aware of in my experience. Um, and if they do, you know, if people don't kind of, um, you know, go down that path with you, then you just got to sometimes make a hard call. Um, and uh, and that's hard to do, and, and I've got better at it over the years. Um, but it's it's not nice because often you make great friendships and you make um, really good connections with people that you work with that are not about, you know, the mindset of business success. They're about being friends and hanging out on the weekend and having a beer and those sorts of things. So, you know, the two, ideally, they always intersect, um, but but in, in the business context, I think it's um, sometimes you've got to make some calls. It is hard, um, and I think that that is something like you were saying, that over the years you become um, better. You, you get more skilled at actually moving forward. And, and because you become clearer about who you are and what you want and what you want to be surrounding yourself with, it becomes a bit easier to, to sort of move and, and shift. And So if you want to think back now into Brad, you know, that 16-year-old kid and your life in your career when you were um, yesterday, because you're still so very young. <laughs> <laughs> what, what sort of advice do you think you would give yourself, your younger self? Uh, look, the I, I've been pretty lucky. I think I've done lots of things that I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change too much. But if there was some advice I might offer, it's, it's you know, your work ethic always doesn't get you everywhere. Um. And there were times where I felt in my career where I thought that was the, the key lever to success, uh, working hard, trying to get things done, um, doing, you know, burn the midnight oil, hustling hard, all those, those you know, kind of entrepreneur kind of sayings. Um, and sometimes that's not always as productive as it could be. So, you know, being able to use that energy and that work ethic in the right places um, but knowing when it doesn't work and and considering how you can approach things differently and thinking thinking about you know the big picture and stepping back from and zooming out um, uh, is something I've learned to do over the you know kind of the last sort of five six years or so much much more than I probably did earlier in my career. Um, but yeah, as a young bloke, work hard, work, keep working at it, um, but realize you know um, grinding every day of the week isn't always going to be. Um, the thing that gets you where you want to get to. I think that that's so true. And, and it, it, it is interesting that as you get older, you become more aware of where you spend your time and your energy. But I, I do also appreciate that that intensity and that focus when you're younger then actually is like an accelerated way of learning about things. So, Brad, how can people after today get hold of you, get, get in touch with you? Yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm reasonably easy to get a hold of on LinkedIn. I find it's a pretty convenient tool. So um, either that or pop me an email to brad at theoutperformer.co. That's .co. Um, yeah, look, uh, you know, I find um, connecting with people interesting, in particular if you want to bounce around ideas that we have, both have in common and, and common goals and common things we're trying to achieve, no problem. Fabulous. So that's Brad Eisenhut. Um, E-I-S-E-N-H-U-T-H for those that are listening and, and not actually um, able to see the video for whatever reason. But I want to thank you so much, Brad, for coming onto the show today and for sharing so many interesting insights into your life and your perspective about success. Thanks, Michelle. Hope it wasn't uh, 
hope it wasn't too boring for those of you that um, that are out in your out in the listener land. But um, if you took something out of it, I'm really grateful. And uh, thanks, Michelle, for putting these things out to the into the the universe. I think it's really important. Thank you so much, Brad, and to everybody that's watching. It's been so fabulous to have you again this week to hear yet again a very different lens and a very different perspective on what success means and how to build that mindset for success. But for now, from my heart to your heart, be great, be fabulous and be you.